Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev and I wanted to do a quick video where I want to show you the different ways that you can send information to your server via HTMX. Okay, so when you're thinking about, okay, how am I going to adapt the forms that I have or how am I going to use send data in different situations? So let's talk about it. So first we're going to do is I'm going to set up an express server. And the reason I'm going to set up the express server from scratch instead of pre-setting it up is so that way um, yeah, I don't, you don't, when there's no assumptions regarding like, hey, how am I parsing the body and all this stuff, you're gonna see exactly the code that I'm using. I wanna make a very simple express server, um, just to kind of illustrate what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna do npm init-y to create our node project. I'm going to install express. That's all I'm gonna need for today. Okay. And then we're going to create a server.js. Okay. And that server.js, we are going to const express equals express. Same deal. You know, I'm going to have my app object. I'm going to set up my middleware. Okay. Which really all I care about is body parsing middleware. Okay. So app.use. One is going to be express.json. Okay. So when we do like the uh, hx include and hx vals examples okay those are going to require those are going to send data over as json but <clears throat> when i do the hx post on the form that's going to send the data as url encoded data so i want to make sure i'm parsing the body correctly so that's the first thing to keep in mind your server needs to know sort of how the data is incoming um, in order to parse it correctly for that body. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to have app.use express.static. Just have a static folder because we'll do most of our HTML there. And then I'm going to have one other route. Okay. Which is just going to be app.post. And it's going to be called show body. Okay. And essentially what this is going to do is that it's going to um, basically res.send an object that's going to show us the headers. So headers as rec.headers and show us the body as rec.body. Okay, so that way basically it's just going to return to us our request. So we can see the resulting request um, as JSON. Okay, um, cool. Okay. And let me think about how I want to do that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just being that I should probably do it as HTML since it's going to be HTMX. So here's what I'm going to do instead. What we're going to do is I'm going to send a template string, which is going to have h1, the body. And what we're going to do is we'll have a code block. And in there, we'll render we'll JSON dot stringify rec dot body. Okay, so that way we just parse that JSON string in there. And then here we'll put uh, h1, the headers. And then we'll do the same thing in there, except it'll be the headers. Okay, so json.stringify rec.headers. So it's going to send back essentially an HTML block with some a lot of text in there. Okay, so that's what this is going to do. So it's going to receive a request and basically show us what's inside that request. That's going to be the point. Okay. Now I am going to create my public folder for my static. So my public folder, and that's where we'll create our index.html where we'll do all our examples. Index.html. And in here, I will do all my HTML boilerplate. Okay. And basically in here, I'm just going to have two, I'm going to have a 
a main tag that's going to be generally um we'll just actually do say a div with the id of display that's going to be generally where we display the response and then we'll have our first example which is going to be div id of form example okay and just do this okay cool so in our first thing, and then I need to have HTMX. So over here, I'm gonna go grab HTMX. Okay, just grab that script tag. So we have HTMX available to us. Okay, cool. And that should do it. So now I just need to run, finish off the server. So let's just add the listener, app.listen. That's fine with me. And then we can just run the server. So node server.js. I shouldn't really need to modify the code anymore. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is just gonna say, hey, your HTMX H1 for HTMX data sending examples. Okay, so now if I go over here to localhost 3000, I see this. Okay, now our first example, we're going to build out a form. Okay. And looks like it's kind of already pretty much knows what I kind of want to go with this. So in this case, we're sending it to not slash form. So basic, but this is going to be the basic structure of it. So you'd have the form. Okay. And actually, we don't even need the this here. So actually, let me just build this form from scratch. So we'll do a form. Okay, and then we're going to do the input, and we're going to just say input type equals text, and we're just going to say that the name of this input is, you know, form text. Okay, and then that's all we need to do there, and then we're going to have a button. That's going to be how we submit. Okay, and this will be submit. And then in here is where the magic happens. Okay, we're gonna do an HX post. So basically what's gonna happen is that this, the fact that we're putting this property in there and the button is in the form, that HX post is gonna take over. So it'll do the event.prevent default under the hood to prevent the form from like refreshing the page and sending out an actual request uh, that's not controlled by uh, HTMX. And this is gonna send it to show body. Okay, and then we gotta make sure we knows where it's gonna send that data to. So we want it to display that data where the ID of display is. And uh, anything else I really wanna say about that? And I think that's pretty good HX post. And um, yeah, it should automatically kind of work with the submit because that's gonna be the event that occurs when you click on it. So now if I refresh this, see now there's the form. So I'm gonna say cheese and I'm gonna hit submit. Okay, and then there's, and you see the body has exactly what we had in the form. Okay, so our form text, that was the name of that input. So basically it formed a body just as we expected, where it has the name of the input and the value of that input in a body. Okay, and I can see here, if I go examine the headers, if we look for the content type header, content type, content length, uh, content type, content type, should be here somewhere, here it is, content type, that it's sending it over as URL encoded data, so just keep in mind, when you set up a form like this, okay, it is going to send it out as URL encoded data, which means your server needs to parse URL encoded data, which is why in my server.js, it was important that I did this, so I just wanted to highlight that there, but you see, that was pretty easy, so, Literally, you just write the forms like you've always been writing them. But instead of using the action and method properties of the form, you can just you, you just put in the HX post for where you're posting or HX put or HX delete. Um, and then where you're going to display that data. And again, it'll automatically know, okay, hey, you submitted this form. Let me handle this because that exists within a form. Okay, so that's method number one. Okay. Now, example number two, div ID. Okay, we're gonna call this Val's example. 
Now, in this case, the user doesn't fill out a form. This is maybe something where you, in your templating, you're going to hard code certain values. So you might be iterating. So you might do, be doing something like a to-do list, and you're just kind of hard coding, completing a to-do. So you don't necessarily need them to customize a, a, a request body through a form. But you want to be able to submit the, the appropriate JSON uh, to handle that particular request. Okay, but just have a button that's like complete. Okay, so what you could do is you could have a button. So here we'll have a button. Okay, and it'll just say complete. And but then what would happen is we would use hx post. So hx post meaning hey when you when you click this you're gonna send it to show body. Okay, and you know I'll just say hey hx trigger triggers when it's clicked. Okay, hx target. Okay, let's just start cleaning this up a little bit. So tab. hx target. It's still going to be display. And here's the, the new thing, hx vals. Okay, so this is going to allow you to express a value that you want to send with the request. So in this case, I want to send JSON. Okay, so in this case, I probably would want to use single quotes, so that way I can use double quotes to express to, to complete my JSON. So it would be square curly brackets, and then we would say something like completed true. Okay, and there would be sort of the JSON I'd send over. Okay, so now when I click this button, okay, it basically knows it's making a post request and that data should be in there. So now if I refresh this, okay, so now I have that complete button. If I click it, there is the body. There's the request body. So as you can see, it does send the request body as we expected it. If I examine the um, body content, okay, well, it's still coming in as URL, it's still coming in as URL encoded, so that's interesting. Okay, but the body is there. Um, Okay, I have to double check how to make sure that an eight, how to make sure that it sends that as JSON so that we can get parsed appropriately. Um, reading through this. Okay. How to change HTMX body uh, HX files to JSON. Okay. Yep. Is there anything I'm doing specifically? Okay. HX values attribute allows you to add two parameters that will be submitted via the HX request. By default, the value of this attribute is a list of name expression values in JSON format. If you wish for HX vows to evaluate the given values, you can pre prefix the values with JavaScript or JS. Okay. And that's another really cool thing about it. I'll talk about that in a second. So in this case, it's still doing URL encoded data. So in that case, you still need that URL encoded parser. So keep that in mind, but it will parse this as, as JSON and send the right body. So you're, you're still in the right spot. Um, but a cool thing you can do is let's say I do another value. Okay, and again, I would use, use the JS in front of this object. So that means it'll parse, it'll apply it. It'll essentially evaluate as JavaScript first. Okay, it'll essentially probably run it through like eval or a function constructor or something like that. But I can add a property in here and we'll just say, hey, like, sum and then i can just write like one plus one okay so we notice that this is this is i'm writing an expression here so let's watch what happens let me go back over here refresh and see i get two so it's going to evaluate any javascript expressions i have here which could be functions um any any kind of you know so basically i could pre-write a function and then have that function invoked whenever this particular button is in link. So that way I can grab, so that way I can dynamically uh, specify what this value is gonna be. So that way, even though it, it's hard coded, this string here is hard coded, it can still be a dynamic because I'm calling some sort of externally defined function that dynamically figures out what that value should be and returns what that value should be. So there's some cool things you can do there. Again, you just prefix that with the JS. So that's method number two. Okay, so again, first I could just do a traditional form Okay, then I could just do a, a button and hard code those values. So this could be useful again if I'm hard coding those values from my template. So I'm generating what the value should be with that button press 
at the time of me generating my template, or if I create a function that will dynamically generate it um, at the time that that button is clicked, which would be some front end defined function. Um, cool, okay, so now let's go for our third example. Okay, so we'll do another div, and this will be the include example. Okay, so the idea here is we'll have a div. Okay, and this div will have an ID of data. Okay, and this div here has two inputs. Okay, type equals text name equals first. Okay, and we'll do a second one just so you can see two of them. Okay, and then I'll also give these ID of first and an ID of second. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a button here and that's gonna be what triggers the thing. Okay, so click me will be what the button says. So we're gonna say, hey, whenever you click this button, it's gonna make a post. So hx post, and it's gonna make a post to show body just like before. And what's gonna happen, the, the trigger of that's gonna be the click. And when you click this button, it's going to send that data over to um, display. So HS target equals display. Now, the question is, I want the data from these two inputs, but they're no longer part of the same form. So this button could literally be anywhere. How do I make sure to include this input? I could include, I'll show you one way to do it first, and then we'll show you a different way, HX target or hx include, this basically says, hey, include this input as the data I'm sending over. So in this case, I could just target the first input by just saying, hey, the thing that has the idea first, I want that included in this request. Okay, so right now it's just gonna include that first input. Okay, so now I'll refresh the page. Okay, I'm gonna hit that click me button. I'm gonna put some you know cheese, bread in the inputs, hit click me. And it did capture that first input because that's the input that I chose. Okay, so notice now they don't need to be part of the same form. I can just sit there and that, that div could be literally be anywhere on the page and I can just say, hey, go well, grab that and make sure you include that with this request. Okay, I don't, have to, I don't personally have to do any kind of DOM searching or imperative DOM logic. I'm just saying when this request comes in, include that. Okay, now I think this, I'm not 100, as 100% 100 sure on, so we're gonna try it out is that if I chose a dis parent div, that it should include both inputs. So we're gonna try that out, okay? So I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna target the div with the ID of data, okay? Hoping that what it'll do is it'll look for the inputs inside the div and use those to construct the body. So let's try that out. Okay, so again, I'll type in the two inputs, cheese, bread. I'll hit click me and it works, okay? So in that case, I could enwrap all my inputs in a div somewhere else on the page, target that div as my includes, and then when this button sends a request, it's gonna make sure to grab all the data from all those inputs and put them in the body, okay? Or it could be any block element. Again, all that matters is that it finds the parent element and can construct this request body. And in this case, it's still URL form encoded. So actually, in all three of these scenarios, it's not sending JSON requests, um, it's sending URL encoded requests, at least by default. I'm sure there's probably a setting you can use to change that. Um, but just keep that in mind because again, body parsers are a thing. Um, but yeah, that shows you three ways to transfer data from HTMX from front end to server using HTMX. That makes life pretty easy. It makes it pretty easy to kind of replicate most patterns. Um, the more, honestly, the more I play with HTMX, the more I really do like it. It, it really just makes a lot of this stuff pretty nice, easy, and seamless kind of actually. Uh, and a lot easier than a lot of the front end frameworks that do a lot of really robust patterns. So I'm pretty excited about it. I will see you all later. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. 
Um, you know, so essentially, because again, at the end of the day, most things going on on a website are you interacting and taking data from that interaction and sending a request. These are the ways you would do that with HTMX. And um, yeah, so, and the cool thing about this is that you could group lots of information together. Okay, so I, I think there's an example on the references where they do like bulk updates. So essentially what you do is that you wrap all those checkboxes in a in some sort of parent element that you checkbox say hey these are the things i want to update and then when you do the hx includes well it's going to create a object showing you which ones were checked off and then you can go back and then apply those updates so pretty cool stuff now interest now one thing i do want to try out before i, I go is what happens if i did can i do hx include multiple times so let's see here hx first can i do that Let's see here. Just in case I had maybe different elements across the sc screen that are not in the same parent element. Okay, second. Okay, so let's refresh. Let's see how that works out. If I hit cheese bread, in this case, it only grabbed the first one. Okay, so only the first one got registered. Okay, now let me look up the HX include. documentation my question is is there a way to specify multiple attributes so hx include name email well that's just specifying the the element with that attribute um fine closes this the attribute allows you to include additional element values in ajax the value of this attribute can be a css query selector of the elements to include this would include the descendants of the element uh, closest, which is the, we'll find the closest ancestor element. So then that asks, that, that makes, that begs me a different question. What if I had two divs? Okay. But instead of the ID of data, so I'll get rid of the ID in this one. Both of these had a class of data. Okay. Cause you can't have an ID more than one thing. Technically. I mean, you could, but you really shouldn't. Okay. So I'll make this third. And I'm going to make this fourth. So now if I went back, instead of targeting, instead of including everything in that by ID, what if I targeted by class? So I said this dot data, because theoretically that would match both these elements. So will it include all four inputs in this case? Let's try it out. Okay. So if I hit refresh, okay. So I'm going to say cheese bread, vegetable, fruit. I'm going to hit click me and see what we get. Okay. So interesting. We got first cheese, vegetable. Oh, I didn't change the name. That's why, but it did work. Okay. So in that case it does work. So it gave us that, that, that is, would be the expected behavior. So let me just change that to third, fourth. Let's see if it does it when I have it set up the right way where each of them have a different name. Cheese, bread, fruit, vegetable. And there you go. Okay. We have four properties in this body. Okay. So in that case, yeah, you don't, they, they can, they can be the children of multiple elements. So you can, you know, be clever in sort of having an, a form that's kind of scattered all across the page or different inputs that are scattered all across the page and deliver all that data and package it all pretty easily by just giving all those different elements, the right class to be able to include them in this way. So that's really cool. Um, just think about the implications of that for a moment, but I'll kind of wrap up things here. Again, make sure to leave a like and a comment and, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll see y'all later.